Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to talk about mallets. What is the perfect mallet? Well, let's find out. So the perfect mallet, that's kind of a loaded question because you really can't have a perfect mallet any more than you can have a perfect anything else. Perfection is not a location, it's a direction. And a lot of people think that perfection is a location. In other words, this is the perfect one. Well, honestly, it's not, not the case because different tools have different uses by different people in different conditions and different shops and on different, different applications. And for each of those combinations, there's a different perfection. So a lot of this is going to be my what works for me, but eh, it may or may not work for you. So I'm gonna go through the mallets I have and describe when I use them and what might work for you. So first off, what's the difference between a mallet and a hammer? Well, most of the time, a hammer is made of metal and a mallet is made of something else, but that's not always the case. For me, usually the biggest difference is a hammer you hold back here. It's meant for an impact at a distance. You get more leverage on it. That, that's where you hold a hammer. A mallet gets held up here. You don't hold a mallet back here. You do that, it becomes a hammer. And so that's where I draw the line. Now other people are gonna draw the line in different places, but most of the time, hammer is for force and farther back on the leverage. And a mallet is something that has a little bit more control and it's a little bit less about the force. You choke up on it, you hold it close to the head. The first one I ever made, and the one I usually suggest most people get, is a traditional joiner's mallet. Now this is one I really suggest you make yourself, because once you understand how to make it, you can change the design for so many different applications, and you can make a mallet that then fits you and what you want it to be. So make your first one something like this, and, and this is a mallet that I probably use more than any else. This is the mallet when I wanna persuade something to move, and I want to use a little bit of regression, I grab a joiner's mallet. A joiner's mallet usually is around two to three, maybe four pounds in the head. Uh, it's often made out of a big block of firewood and just a, a good crunky piece. Some people will make it out of a crotch where the grain's going everywhere. And it's got a sturdy handle. Usually the shaping for the handle is right up next to the head. It's just a really good design. And I've got quite a few videos on making these. Now, what is the best material for a mallet? That really depends because I have a lot of things. I have white oak, I have cherry, I have maple, I have walnut, I have pine, I have live oak, I have leather, I have maple, I have metal. The list goes on and on. Basically, the heavier the wood, the more force you can put into it, but the better chance your wood is going to dent or harm your work. The softer the wood, the less weight it is, so it's not gonna be able to persuade things, but if you hit something, you're probably not gonna hurt the work as much as you're gonna hurt the mallet. For my joiner's mallet, white oak, I absolutely love it. Pretty much anything white oak or harder is pretty standard for a joiner's mallet. If I had my all-time favorite, it would probably be live oak, but that's just because it looks really cool. So the next mallet I generally suggest, after a good sturdy joiner's mallet, a lot of people are gonna think you probably want a finishing mallet, something that's a little bit softer, but usually I'm gonna say, actually, Make a carving mallet. Now this is one you don't hold the handle, you actually hold the head. You actually hold the head and you hit it behind. And that's why some carving mallets are even just a palm sized thing you, you swing. But having a little bit of weight back here with a pommel kind of gives you a little bit more balance. I have a video on turning this out of live oak and uh, I absolutely love this one. Whenever I'm doing carving work or detail work, this is the one. If I'm chopping a mortise or banging on a chisel, I'm gonna use a joiner's mallet. If I'm going detail and I'm using a carving chisel and I want to take my time and have more control, that's where the carving mallet comes in. With this, I can have a lot more control. If I'm pushing with my hand on the chisel, the chisel is sharp enough to do the work and slide through the work, but every now and then it'll catch on something and I put more pressure into it and I can't release the pressure and it just will pop out and go right through the work and you really don't like that. A carving chisel gives you that control. Small little light taps, and you can input an exact amount of pressure to make the chisel go where you want it. A mallet gives you far more control than you can just have with your hand. There are times when I'm seriously banging on something and trying to get it to move, and a joiner's mallet just isn't quite enough. For that, I actually have a metal split face mallet. It has wooden faces on it, and that gives me a little bit softer impact, so if I'm banging on a wooden chisel, I'm not going to be harming the chisel. But it's got the weight behind it. This whole thing is a three pound split head, and it can do a lot of damage really quickly. 
This one you can actually still buy on Amazon. I'll try and leave a link to that down below. And I have in here uh, maple, end grain maple coming out. And that's why it's all split out. It's about time for me to replace it. But the nice thing is I can loosen this nut, open it up, pull out these heads, and put in new ones. I also have a similar one, but with this I have end grain pine. So this is a softer impact, but still the same amount of weight. And so you can actually get different mallets, and some people will put a different head in each side. Some people will even put leather in here so that they can do their leather work or other soft joinery. Speaking of leather work, if you're ever working with leather punches, having a rawhide hammer really makes things very useful. Now, notice I called it a hammer because generally I'm going to hold it back here. Um, when I'm pounding on that, I want to be tapping back here. I don't hold this up as much as I do that way. But having this in the shop, I find I use it for a lot of other things. The rawhide is very, very good on metal surfaces, so I'm afraid of actually hurting the metal, but I still want to hit it. This is harder than some of the woods but still soft enough, I'm not going to harm the metal, I'm not going to mushroom over the metal. And so this is a very useful hammer to have. I have two other little ones right here. This one is commonly referred to as a chasing hammer. Uh, you do hold it back here on the pommel, but this is for chasing work, which is basically carving in metal. Having a large flat face, you can tap easily. The ball peen allows you to do some round over and some riveting. Uh, I don't use it as much for woodworking, but every now and then I, I kind of like it. Uh, anytime I want to do some light peening work, this one comes in very, very useful. On that note, I also have this one. This is a plane adjustment hammer, and it's got this wedge on the back so you can eject wedges out of the plane. As well, it's a very lightweight head. This is only like three ounces. It's incredibly light, and anytime I want to really have a, a, a very controlled impact and move something a very small amount, such as plane adjustment, this comes in very useful. Now, a lot of plane adjustment mallets have either a leather head or a brass head, so they're not harming the metal on the, the, the steel iron, uh, but I really like this one and the simple design on it. I've got a video on doing that carving if you want to see that as well. Then, going back to carving mallets, with a carving mallet, you're looking for something lightweight. And I like this one, it just fits my hand. I like having a little bit larger impact. Though some people like using these little brass mallets, they work really well. And you do the same thing, you hold it up here and you just hit it between your fingers. And you get this nice controlled impact. Uh, having small brass hammers like this are fantastic. This one's from ShopFox. It's just a simple screw-in handle to a uh, brass head. Um, carving chisels come in all different types, some with leather faces, some with uh, rubber faces, some brass, some wood. Uh, you can get them in so many different types that basically everyone has their favorite design. You really got to find one that fits your style. And these are just the mallets I use on a regular basis. Different people are going to want other mallets, and there are hundreds and hundreds of other designs out there, and I've got a few others that I generally don't use that much. But there are some other weirdos that some people really do like, because we're all a little bit weirdo. If you ever watched The English Woodworker, he uses a little three-pound sledge to do his mortising work, and I find that to be a lot of work on the hand, not to mention the metal face on the wood chisel, and it's kind of annoying to me, but a lot of people out there like that. So if you want to get a lot more force into it, you know, get yourself a mini sledge and do your work with that. And then I have this mallet that was made for me by one of the viewers, and it is interesting. Most of the time, the handle is shaped in which it's comfortable for your hand to be in line with the head. This one, it's actually shaped for your hand to be out of line with the head. And I thought, what's up with that? But every now and then you need to do some chisel working up here where your arms are at. And it's very nice to be able to grab it and tap like this rather than trying to tap like this. You can hold the chisel and it work pretty comfortably. So there's lots of little modifications out there and really there is no perfect mallet. It's eventually you'll start with one and then you'll be like, ooh, I got that one. And, ooh, I've got that one. And, oh, there's this one. And ah, I like that one. You can never have enough mallets. I will try and leave a link to all of these mallets and when I made them. Uh, most of them I have a how-to video or where I talk through its actual use or I'll have a link to where you can buy the specific mallet. This is one of these topics where it's a very personal preference. There is no such thing as perfection. Get one that you think will work for you and then modify it. Then add another one to your arsenal which is a heavier, more powerful or maybe a lighter, more softable. And there are so many different things you can try and learn and experiment with. Mallets are one of those fun tools that once you start getting into them, you get that favorite mallet for that particular use and that favorite mallet for that particular use. And um, have a little bit of fun. Maybe decorate an entire wall in mallets. Don't look.
So I hope you like this little talk through about mallets. They are a fun tool to have in the shop and one of these things where you really can't get away without them. But they are so simple, if you really need to, you could just grab a stick and use it as that. So yeah, have a little bit of fun. Experiment, try something and you might find the perfect mallet for you. If you do have anything that I missed, any questions, comments, or ideas, let me know those down in the comments below. I do learn about all sorts of new things all the time from what people have posted. So thank you for that, keep them coming. I'm looking forward to seeing what you post in the comments down below. As always, I wanna say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel. Without you, this channel literally would not exist. I know I always say it, but you guys are the reason the lights are still on, and I'm saying that while one of my softboxes has burnt out. So I need to replace that. <laughs> thank you to the patrons for being able to allow that to happen. Uh, you really are keeping the shop going. When something dies, I can have the money to replace it and keep these videos coming. So if you do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over here on the side, tell them thank you because they literally are the reason that these lights stay on. So that's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Mawat is what brings us together today.